Hi, today we're speaking with Dr. Richard Bowles, and you may be a functional medicine doctor, and you're probably seeing patients that are dealing with things like pain, fatigue, nausea, anxiety, other things. You may feel like you've really helped people turn the corner with a lot of what they're dealing with, but it's likely you have a segment of patients that you just feel like you haven't gotten quite there. Dr. Bowles, would you please talk to us about mitochondrial dysfunction and how that may be playing a part? You probably remember from medical school that the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. Energy is life itself, and all cells, all tissues need energy to do just about everything that they do. If energy metabolism is not optimal, your patient is at higher risk to develop a lot of different conditions. Mitochondrial dysfunction does not necessarily cause any of these conditions, but it contributes to all of them because energy, again, is needed for life and for all the functions of life. Many of these are very common and they tend to be neurological conditions because the nerves are electrical and require a tremendous amount of energy per wave. Conditions that are common in mitochondrial dysfunction are often labeled dysfunctional, such as chronic pain, fatigue, nausea, and or dizziness. Many of them are often labeled as neuropsychiatric, such as anxiety and or depression. Many of them are neurodevelopmental disorders, such as ADHD and autism. All of these conditions are neurological and nerves require a lot of energy. So all of these conditions can be predisposed towards by mitochondrial dysfunction. I'm not saying that mitochondrial dysfunction is the cause of all of your patients with fatigue, depression, or nausea. What I am saying is that many of your patients with these type of problems and similar problems do have mitochondrial dysfunction as part of their issue, particularly if one of your patients has many of these conditions. It, mitochondrial dysfunction is likely. And I'm also saying that in those that do have mitochondrial dysfunction, that treatment is very important. Mitochondrial dysfunction is treatable. There are many natural treatments out there. And in my experience, these conditions are very highly treatable with natural therapies. Question about mitochondrial dysfunction. If there are those out there who believe that that's either, that's a light switch. You either have it completely or you have it incompletely compared to the idea that you have different levels of mitochondrial dysfunction. Where do you, uh, where do you stand on that idea? Patients that have very severe deficiencies in mitochondrial function often have mitochondrial disease. And those patients often have very severe brain disease as well as disease of the rest of the, the body. So they have mental retardation, often epilepsy, and multi-system disorders. People on the other end of the spectrum are athletes. Most people are somewhere in between. Those people that are somewhere in between that are maybe a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum, those are the ones that are often the patients that have mitochondrial dysfunction. It can present in many different ways. Migraine is one of the most common ones, chronic fatigue, nausea and vomiting and other GI dysmotility issues, psychiatric problems. There are many different ways that it can present. So your patient might have mitochondrial dysfunction. What do you do about it? Mitochondrial function is highly dependent upon multiple nutrients. In fact, many of the substances that we call vitamins, as well as many minerals and antioxidants and other micronutrients work particularly in the mitochondria or maybe exclusively in the mitochondria. Giving large amounts of these nutrients can help the mitochondria work at full efficiency or at improved efficiency. In addition to that, mitochondria that are not working very well produce a lot of free radicals, organic acids, and other toxins. It's sort of analogous to an automobile. If the automobile is running at peak efficiency, it's not going to produce a lot of pollution. But if that automobile is driving on a freeway, going uphill, pulling a trailer, it's requiring a lot of energy, and you're going to see a significant amount of smoke coming from that vehicle. What smoke is, is half-burned gasoline. Well, our mitochondria burn fats for a lot of the energy and half burned fats are many of the problems that we see, the organic acids in patients with mitochondrial dysfunction. We also see half burned carbohydrates, such as lactate, lactic acid, and we see free radicals, which are very important in damaging cells, um, membranes, proteins, as well as DNA. So antioxidants are critically important for treatment of mitochondria dysfunction to try 
try to remove these toxins and to mitigate their damage. So can a patient get all of this from their diet? Well, one of the important reasons to get a good diet is to get the trace minerals, vitamins, cofactors, and other micronutrients that are needed for proper mitochondrial dysfunction, as well as for detoxification of mitochondria. The problem is, is that the amount, you could eat the entire salad bar of several restaurants on a street and not get as much as you can give in a dietary supplement. So while diet is important and you can get things from diet that we currently don't know about or can't really put into a dietary supplement, it won't do it by itself. Diet plus dietary supplements are really the way to go. With a dietary supplement at high dose with high bioavailability, in other words, that it gets into the body and particularly into the brain, can help with mitochondrial dysfunction a lot more than you can do with diet alone. So would you walk us through um, the products of, of NeuroNeeds and why someone may want to try those? Well, NeuroNeeds is a collaboration of multiple well-known physicians, particularly physician scientists that work in the neurodevelopmental and functional medicine spaces. So we see patients every day with these problems. I have spearheaded the development of these products. The our flagship products have multiple nutrients together, which act for optimizing mitochondrial function. Spectrum Needs is a powder with 33 active ingredients. It has two flavors, lemon and berry. It's mostly designed for children that can't swallow capsules, but many of our older patients like it as well. Energy Needs is very similar with 40 active ingredients in a capsule form. It's mostly for teenagers and adults, but some of the kids like to take that as well. Both spectrum needs and energy needs are designed for patients with a wide variety of problems that are likely due to mitochondrial dysfunction, in particular the functional disorders such as chronic pain, fatigue, anxiety, nausea, and dizziness, as well as the neurodevelopmental disorders such as developmental delay, epilepsy, autism, and ADHD. But Dr. Bowles, I'm, I'm a functional doctor uh, I'm familiar with what you're saying. It makes complete, total sense. I already use a couple products that are really easy for me to order. Um, and I just, you know, why would I switch? Take a look at those products. Do they really have all of the active ingredients you need to address mitochondrial dysfunction? They probably have B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, E, perhaps even vitamins A and K but do they have the proper doses? Most of these products, for example, for riboflavin vitamin B2 may have two, three, maybe 10 milligrams, but not a really high dose that you need for mitochondrial function. Take a look at the labels on the products that you use and the labels of energy needs and spectrum needs and to see, does the product that you use really address mitochondrial dysfunction in a comprehensive way? Does it have bioavailable sources? Does it have adequate dosing? If there's someone out there that now they're thinking, well, this may not be set up to work. And I have seen that some patients aren't responding the way I want them to. Is there any risk in them trying these products with their patient? One of the questions that I got when I was starting this company is that many of my patients have side effects and can't tolerate certain supplements. And if you put 33 or 40 active ingredients together, no one's ever going to be able to tolerate it. But in reality, my patients are tolerating these products far better than individuals. I think that's because energy is made on an assembly line. Actually, from electron micrographs, you can see that, that that's the case and the electrons go from complex to complex. Think about an assembly line and a poor guy in the middle of that line took his vitamins and went twice as fast. You're not gonna make twice as many widgets or cars. You're just gonna have total chaos. The only way to really make more cars is to have everybody on the assembly line take their vitamins and the whole line to go faster. So I find far fewer side effects from the combination products than from individual products. Side effects are very few, they're mild, and they're immediately reversible upon stopping the product. 
Some people do get more over energized, which is probably actually a benefit is just that they can now cause more trouble than they could before. With any dietary supplement, nausea can be an issue. So we do recommend starting low, going slow and taking with a meal, at least at first. It sounds like maybe a good next step for someone watching this is to take one of two different actions. If you're thinking that this makes sense and you just want to get started, you want to try it, you can actually order the product directly. Uh, number two, you can actually reach out and have a one-to-one -one conversation with Dr. Bowles. Dr. Bowles, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you very much.